So the president, as usual, came and gave him what people might think is a fantastic speech. But you called him a liar. Let's speak to that. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to also share, like, and comment. As you start to hear what you are speaking, and then when he finished and he was going out in splendor and pomp to the, to the, to the support of his uh, MPs, you had a different view. Tell us. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll start by saying that uh, uh, as a leader, we need to understand that we, we owe a duty to our people to give uh, reasons, uh, guidance to uh, the community in which we belong, and in his case, to the country. Um, there are a lot of things that were said prior to the elections by the, by the president, a lot of things. Uh, and the reason why I've said this is because, uh, the reason why I've talked about duty is because when you say something as a leader, you need to be accountable for what you say to the extent that if it's not working or maybe it's not possible, you need to go back to the community to go and give reasons or to explain why uh, what people were expecting or what you were expecting as a leader has not worked. I think that is uh, the first thing. And uh, as leaders, we need to be honest. <laughs> Let me, let me say that uh, it is known uh, that uh, we politicians are liars. But I think uh, the extent also to which you lie, there should be some, uh, maybe for lack of words, some decency. Yeah. If you remember prior to the elections, during those campaigns, we were promised that uh, things would be different. We were promised that uh, the price of millimil would uh, be would be uh, fifty kwacha. We were also promised that uh, uh, we would not have uh, uh, load shedding anymore. We were also uh, told that uh, uh, the middleman, with the as regards the the, uh, the purchase of fuel would be uh, cut out to the extent that uh, fuel will now be at a better, better price. But everything that we see now is uh, very different. He also said that uh, we would be able to see what democracy really is. But now people are being pushed left, right, center. Every day someone from the opposition is called to, to the police station uh, over allegations that are not even well uh, established. People are being kept in cells for over, uh, over 24 hours without being uh, uh, charged. Look at, we have uh, uh, this uh, Rizwan. He's still in uh, the eastern province there in... Uh, Rizwan Patel. Rizwan Patel, yes. He has not uh, been formally charged. And it's been over, I think, six months, if I'm not... Uh, two, two months, but two, is in the second month. This, mm. this is the second month. So that still is not 24 hours. So when we look at uh, a lot of things, look at the corruption. Corruption now, because <laughs> I think they said, uh, no, the, the patriotic front are thieves and whatnot, but uh, the, what we are seeing now in broad daylight, it's like uh, our country is being torn apart, really. And it's just being done in the open like that. Um, I would give... Uh, a lot of uh, examples, really. So the question is, how do you uh, expect to trust such a leader? When we talk about the dollar rates, and apparently there was a time frame, 10 hours, and then I don't know if it's 14 or somewhere there, the dollar was supposed to have re reached a certain uh, uh, number. So we need to get to a level in the country where if you think as a leader you failed to provide the solution, the, the, uh, what you had uh, asked the people to, uh, what you had uh, told the people, you need to come out in the open to say you have failed or maybe it's not going to work, you need to provide a time frame or something. Everything that 
our most of the things that uh, our president said during uh, those uh, the campaigns i'm not certain i can actually point at one thing to really be proud of and say this is what's happening they talked about uh, uh kadarism what is happening these days the cadres are everywhere in the markets in the bus stations and they are doing it publicly i'll also give you an example I had uh, a by-election in Mambilima constituency for the council chairperson. That by-election was not free and fair. They beat up our people, they intimidated them, and we almost lost uh, uh, a life of a, a certain uh, old man. So when they say there's no Kadarism, what exactly do they mean? Because most of these by-elections, we can even talk about the by-election in Mwansawombe. Mm where our people were beaten. Our people were beaten, and not only beaten, they were intimidated. There was corruption as usual, where uh, there were about five ministers that had come uh, Into in, a the, in, in the ward mm. <laughs> unprecedented. We have five uh, ministers to come and uh, see what is happening in the by-election, work in that particular by-election, and publicly giving out money. Eh? To the extent where, uh, I think uh, apart from money, they were even giving uh, things like millimil, uh, and in some areas, as I also we hear they were giving uh, uh, fertilizers, like before, mm. yes. So all those things, then <laughs> I don't know if you can say that uh, things are going well in the country. Yeah. It's like you said, I'm, I'm going to do... Th no, when, uh, when you vote for us, uh, the UPND, this is what's going to come. We shall do things differently. There will be no reason. There will be no... But that is exactly what is happening. If you said you pushed away the patriotic front because they were violent, then why are you doing the same thing? Because we expect you to... We expect something different from you. Mm. Now, if you are doing the opposite of what you said, then why should I not challenge you? Because if someone says you don't have evidence, just before I came here, I was watching a, a video of uh, where he said uh, uh, the reason why PF is not doing well is because they lack uh, good leadership. That is why the fuel prices were, uh, were high. That is why the dollar rate was high. Then what can I say? Because if you said it was poor leadership, then I'll also say it is poor leadership on your part. There's nothing different. Leadership <laughs> will always be leadership. So if yeah. you said it is poor, then even if you also say it is poor leadership on your part, there's nothing different. Leadership <laughs> will always be leadership. So if yeah. you said it is poor, then even in this situation, in this year, 2024, it is uh, still poor leadership. Mm. So mm. some of these things that we say uh, have uh, implications. And so when uh, you, then I would also when say... You called, when you called him out mm. and you said, Wufi Wakateka Wufi, mm. he turned back. What did he mm. come to say to you? Mm. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me say, uh, lies have short legs. Yeah. They are very short-lived. That is why uh, I remember watching a clip where the president... Uh, Dr. Frederick, Frederick Chiluba said, uh, uh, you see, the things that you say now will have uh, repercussions in the, in the future to the extent that you need to be careful with what you say now so that uh, it doesn't affect you, the future, you know? Uh, so at that point, uh, if you noticed during the speech, I actually walked out when he started talking about uh, the, the judiciary. There was, I don't think I was really happy with uh, what he said uh, about uh, the judiciary and uh, how things are working with the, uh, the, the, that arm of, uh, of the government. So I, I walked out a bit just to... <laughs> to cool down. <laughs> yes. Because you couldn't because stand him I telling those lies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, when he came, uh, after I shouted... Uh, uh, I want to say that when I'm given an opportunity to meet the president 
even if it's at parliament, then that is my opportunity. I had an opportunity to meet him, and it was my opportunity that time to speak to him. <laughs> so that was the platform I had. Yeah. And uh, when I shouted that, I think he heard, and then he was almost leaving, and then he got back. The question he asked me was, Bushe, nini abona later drought? If you saw, he was even pointing, because he was trying to say it's an act of God. Yeah. Then I said, yes, it is. That is why I don't even want to talk about the drought. Let us talk about the real issues. Moneni Ubunga, because we were talking in Bemba. Yes, yes. No, apparently the president has been speaking good Bemba of late. Yeah. So I said, Moneni Ubunga, mutengo wa Ubunga po ufikire. Moneni ama light mwati, the Lord shed in takuakave. Moneni mutengo wa mafuta, mafiu wa prices. Look at the dollar. This is the th these are the things we need to be talking about, Mr. President. Well, <laughs> he didn't have anything to say, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's how he said. Mm. And uh, that's how we had to live. No, first I would like I would to commend to... you. I would like to commend you for that act of bravery. Mm. You were very, very brave to confront the president. Mm. And I'm glad that you you were issue-based. You want answers from your leader. You want answers from our leader. Mm. And uh, you challenged him. And I think all of us in the country must commend you. Mm. And our appeal to the UPND and this leadership is that they shouldn't intimidate you. Mm. They shouldn't threaten you. You have a right to speak. Mm. You are in the sanctity of parliament mm. and that they should respect. And he himself, the president, came to face you. Mm. So I don't think that he took it maliciously. He wanted to hear what your concerns are. Mm. And he wanted to blame the drought. And I'm glad that he attempted to blame the drought. Mm. Because when President Edgar Lungu said... It's because of the drought. He said, no, it's a leadership issue. Yes. You can prepare. They didn't prepare. They've exported all the maize. Mm. You know, there are many things you can do with the impending drought. They were warned in advance. They haven't prepared. Mm. So it's also a leadership issue, like he said then. Yeah, so continue. I just wanted to contribute there. Yes, uh, so basically... Uh, I think the president should come out in the open. When things are, are not going well, he should come out in the open and explain. Remember I said leaders should be held accountable for certain things that they say. So if you said this is going to be like this, this is going to be like this, there are a lot of things, a lot of things. Maybe I've, I've even left out uh, many of them. The so promises what, and pledges he, yes. he made as campaign promises. As campaign promises. So I would actually urge the president to say, come out in the open and explain to Would you want to him the... to apologize? <laughs> uh, when I say he should come out in the open, that's also a way of uh, uh, humbling himself. There's a certain extent where uh, things will not go as you planned. Mm. But if you come out in the open and say, Mwebantu, Nadi Lubapa, Elwe Chalengo Kwat Fienda, we know if into Nifi. And uh, in Bemba, to Arquata, Idiati, Amanoya, Minamu, if we say I am fuel, I am chulu. That act I put up on Friday should actually mean something to him to say, This is a young person who has approached me in such a manner. Then the, I should do something about it. Because that was a, it, everyone was watching, and everyone heard from the speech. 70% uh, of it was uh, uh, not well put. So I think he should come out in the open and uh, tell the people to say, this is what is happening, I've failed to deliver this, give me uh, some time. And I think that is what a good leader should do. Mm -hmm. Not everything will sit well, not everything will go as planned. So what you do now is to come out in the open and say, if you failed, say I've failed. If you need a bit of time, say, okay, I think I said I'll deliver in March, but maybe let's see what will happen in August or something like that. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, J Cool, and turn on the notification bell, because I'm going to see you in the next video. <laughs>
DJ Cool and turn on the notification bell cause I'm gonna see you in the next video. <laughs>